and, and if you didn't know, it's one of the most litigated pieces of legislation in Queensland, PAMDA, particularly the amendments a few years back with the facsimile and the top sheet and you've got to provide the warning statement. Not only you've got to provide the 30C warning statement, but you've got to provide a direction to have a look at the warning statement. So how stupid. You had a system where uh, you had a contract that people signed. We enter a buyer beware market we live in. But then government said, oh, but we don't trust people to make these decisions for themselves, so we're going to have a government form called the warning statement 30C. So the buyer is going to have to sort of sign that. But we really don't trust the buyer to be able to even sign that. So we're going to tell the agent or the lawyer or the seller to direct the attention to the big thing that says warning, you know, if it wasn't obvious already. So we don't trust the buyer to do that. So we're going to tell the seller, the lawyer or the agent to direct their attention to the warning statement. But we don't trust them to be able to tell them that. We're going to tell them we've got to direct it in writing on not one occasion, but two occasions. So you had a situation where you'd have a contract prepared. Uh, and you all know you had a contract prepared, uh, it would be presented to the buyer, a direction would be given to the buyer before they sign, have a look at the warning statement. The buyer would sign if they liked the deal, it would then go back to the seller, the seller would sign uh, having accepted the offer uh, and then when it went back to the buyer another direction had to be given to look at the warning statement despite the fact they've looked at it, they've signed it and uh, the seller's accepted the offer. So then they move that around, say, okay, well, your direction doesn't have to be in writing, it can be a verbal direction. Anyway, folks, can I just say, we're getting rid of it, okay? The warning statement, the direction will be gone. Uh, we are serious about this, uh, so not only will we get rid of the warning statement, uh, we're going to get rid of the direction uh, to the warning statement. Uh, and what we're going to do is work with the REIQ and the Law Society and others that produce land contracts in Queensland to come up with a way that simply where the person signs it, uh, there's an acknowledgement that they've either obtained, they, they, go, they can have the option to obtain independent legal advice and the cooling off period. So essentially that little, little box where, the, uh, uh, where they had the warning statement, uh, we'll work with the REIQ to incorporate that somehow into the standard contract just where they sign it. So when they put pen to paper, the little warning's just right there, but there's no requirement. Because you get rid of that, then what you do, you get rid of the litigation attached to not having, you know, someone having to prove that they gave the, they gave the statement or they directed the buyer's attention to the statement. So we're happy uh, uh, to be able to get rid of that. Uh, now, I can also announce to you today uh, that Cabinet endorsed yesterday in Gundawindi the split of PAMDA. So uh, I have, we'll be splitting PAMDA uh, immediately uh, into industry specific legislation. Now, now you know the history with this, it sat on the old parliament books for two years, never got debated, we went to an election. Uh, what we're going to do is a little, something a little different. Uh, you've had the draft, well, you, you had the bills in parliament, they went through a whole parliamentary inquiry uh, into what was good, what was bad. The parliamentary committee that I was on even recommended getting rid of the warning statements and so forth, uh, but uh, the, the government at the time could never bring themselves to do it, although during the election campaign uh, Anna Bly came out and said, oh yes, we're going to look at streamlining contracts in Queensland, and, and better than that, we're going to have one contract across Queensland, not realising the fact that any, any land in Queensland can be entered into, just in, it's got to be in writing, so it, wouldn't, it was never going to work just one standard contract in Queensland because you always have the right to be able to negotiate and enter a contract with someone anyway. But we have good standard contracts. The REIQ, the Law Society, it's a good standard contract. There's nothing really wrong with the contract. I think we can get rid of a bit of the regulation red tape around the, the contract or what you've got to have in there. Uh, but uh, the issue wasn't the contract. The issue is what government forcing people to attach to the contract uh, and everything. So, so what we're going to do is, so we had these, uh, we had PAMDA split, the bills were introduced into Parliament, it went through a whole committee process, certain recommendations were being made by all the industry groups, uh, and then it never got anywhere. So I took to Cabinet yesterday uh, a proposal to split PAMDA, which Cabinet agreed, uh, but what we're going to do, I'm going to in the very near future, and I'm talking uh, sort of uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to uh, not introduce the bills into Parliament, I'm going to release the draft bills to the world at large. I'm going to call Anton and Pamela into my office and I'm say, this is the Property Agents Draft Act. I want you to tell me what the duplication, the inefficiencies 
and I want to know what else you want out of this legislation. So rather than sending it off to a parliamentary committee where it's going to be tied up for another couple of months, I'm going to handle it myself. And we're going to release the draft bills to the public and we're going to say to all the industry, the Motor Dealers Traders Association, who they'll have their own specific piece of legislation, we're going to say, you've got a few weeks, come back to me directly with duplication in this legislation and how we can reduce the legislation. Because just splitting it actually does increase the legislation um, by about 100 pages. That's because you've got indexes and titles and your four different separate bills. So it has, a, in fact, increased it. But I want to make sure that we can be a government say we've actually reduced uh, the, the pages. So you know, I need about 100 pages found here uh, of red tape and reduction or duplication, or things that, for instance, uh, when I release the draft bills, we will have dealt with the warning statement. So it's not going to be sort of a, a new, you know, come to me with a warning statement. We will have dealt with that in the draft bill. So that, that'll be sorted out, it'll be gone, and you'll see it in the draft bill. There's other things like uh, auctioneers. Uh, there was a silly suggestion in the, in the former bill that was going to mean that if you were an auctioneer selling a, a, a rural property and then you wanted to sell the chattels attached to the property, you were going to have to have two licences for that. We're going to get rid of that and stop that from happening. So in the draft bill that I release in a couple of weeks, we, have, we will have dealt with that. So the draft bills that will be out in a couple of weeks will not be the same as the draft bills the former government introduced into Parliament. We've dealt with our election commitment about the warning statement 30C. We'll take all of that out. We'll get rid of the direction. We'll, we'll have that in the draft bill, but we'll also have a few things like the uh, uh, making sure that there's not going to be a duplication of licences, that if you sell a rural farm on the same day, you can sell the shuttles as well in sort of the auction without having to pay uh, for two separate licences. So I think that rather than sending it into Parliament, rather than giving it to uh, the Parliamentary Committee to look at, um, it's going to be up to the REIQ to tell me in the next month, and I suspect they've already sort of got a submission or letter ready to go because I did, I did warn Anton about this. Um, I said, you know, you might want to be prepared to, to tell me what else you want uh, gone. And then what we'll do is uh, the feedback will come back over the next month. Uh, and then I'm hoping uh, that in, uh, we're nearly in November, I'm hoping in December sometime, I go back to Cabinet and say these were the draft bills, these are what industry is saying for us to, uh, to amend even further. It's in line with the government's commitments about reducing red tape and regulation in the industry. It helps the key pillar of construction in the industry, getting things moving. It helps business. It still protects the consumer in these elements. Uh, let's get on with the job. If Cabinet give me that approval then, the bills will be then, uh, well, they'll be already, um, obviously, to go to Cabinet, they'll be amended to an extent. Uh, then we're right to introduce it into Parliament. So I'm hoping, sort of, from early next year, you will have an industry specific piece of legislation. Uh, that's the quickest way we're going to do it rather than sending it off to another parliamentary inquiry. I believe that work's all being done. I have a fair idea of what I want to do with it, and we'll, as I said, we'll address the, um, those couple of issues. Some of the other stuff that we're going to, in the draft bills, release uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, obviously, we'll deal with the warning statement. Uh, we're going to uh, remove requirements uh, for licences to, to be displayed in offices. We're not going to get rid of licences, but all the sort of bureaucracy that goes around displays and things like that and getting frames, that, that'll, all, uh, that'll all go. Uh, there will be uh, removing licensing for uh, property developers, which was in the original uh, bill. That's a hit to the government revenue. But again, you know, people are going to develop stuff. They've got to get all the necessary approvals anyway. So we, we're happy to uh, proceed with that. Uh, so folks, I think it's going to be exciting in the next couple of weeks. Uh, look out for that piece of legislation. And really, it's going to be the REIQ having the responsibility to go to its members and say, you know, you got to, what I want you to do is look into your business every day or next time you sign a contract for a sale or a purchase a sale, uh, I want you to start jotting these things down that, you know, why are we doing this? You know, that's how it started with sustainability declarations. That's how it started with me practicing in property law with the, uh, with the warning statements. You know, just asking the question, why? Well, uh, don't ask yourself that. You've got to tell me why. And uh, if, if there's not a good reason why we do things or why we're forcing you to do it under the legislation, then tell us and we'll get rid of it if we can. Uh, so uh, I, think, uh, uh, I think that's going to be a great opportunity for reducing red tape again in your industry. Because what we're trying to achieve in all of this, of course, if we, if we reduce 
the regulation and the burden. Uh, and if we uh, achieve what I'm trying to achieve, i.e. government getting out of your life, uh, you know, we just want you to sell houses. We want you to run your businesses. We want you to be as, uh, as open and transparent as you can be, but we just don't want to necessarily be involved. We'll always have a regulatory environment around this, but we need to just get out of your way and get the roadblocks out of the way so you can get on with the job and, uh, and uh, sell properties in Queensland.